Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Bible in the News. This week, we have seen Benjamin Netanyahu elected for a record fifth term as Prime Minister of Israel, and we look at this in light of Bible prophecy. As Bible believers, it is very clear to us that Israel must be at peace at the time of the Gogian invasion into the land that we read of in Ezekiel 38. Ezekiel is very clear about this in verse 11. And thou, that's Gog, shalt say, I will go up to the land of unwalled villages. I will go up to them that are at rest, that dwell safely, all of them dwelling without walls and having neither bars nor gates. And since Israel has become a nation, there has never been a point in history where you could say this of the land. Israel was at a constant threat of invasion up until the 1970s, and since then it has been plagued by terrorism. Over the last 20 years, Israel has had to construct a security barrier, which is partly wall, partly fence, that goes around the West Bank to prevent people from bringing in uh, weapons that could be used for terrorist attacks. Settlements in the West Bank have walls and fences and armed gates at their entrances to prevent people coming in to stage terrorist attacks. Israel is, at the moment, without question, not a land without walls, bars or gates. Although peace is not the current situation in the land of Israel, we can be sure that there will be a time when Israel will be at peace. Now, bringing peace to Israel is something that world leaders have for decades tried to achieve through a so-called called land for peace formula, where Israel gives away land to a Palestinian state in exchange for peace. And the only substantial area of land that could seriously be made into a Palestinian state is, of course, the West Bank, an area of land that Israel captured in 1967. And although this has been pushed for for many years, it has proved very controversial. Some 400,000 Israelis live in the West Bank, and any Palestinian state would insist on these people being removed. This would also be a problem, of course, for Bible believers, because we know that the West Bank is the mountains of Israel, an area that is specifically mentioned as being inhabited by Israel in Ezekiel 38 verse 8. And after many days thou shalt be visited in the latter years. Thou, that's Gog, shalt come into the land that is brought back from the sword and is gathered out of many people against the mountains of Israel, which have, all, have been always waste. But it is brought forth out of the nations and they shall dwell safely, all of them. So we can see here that not only is Israel in peace, they are at peace on the mountains of Israel, or the West Bank. Because of this, we can be sure that either, either no peace deal will involve Israel giving up the West Bank, and if it did, then the West Bank must at some point be returned to Israel. Israel must be in peace and also hold the mountains of Israel before the Battle of Armageddon. Almost every US president has at some point attempted to bring peace to Israel. And, it has, and in every case, it has suggested this basic framework of the West Bank becoming some Palestinian state. Wanting to bring peace to Israel is one area where President Trump is no exception to his predecessors. And he's currently preparing to release the currently secret peace plan that he's been working on for the last few years, which we may have released as early as June of this year. And this week, of course, we had the Israeli election, where Benjamin Netanyahu was neck and neck with his opponent, who was from the Blue and White Party, Benny Gantz. Netanyahu pledged to annex Israeli settlements in the West Bank, and also ruled out removing a single Israeli from the West Bank as part of any peace plan. This effectively was him ruling out any form of peace plan that involved Israel giving up the West Bank. And for President Trump, who was no doubt looking at the Israeli election with great interest in relation to his peace plan, these red lines could have caused major problems. In an interview with, a, with an Israeli media outlet, I24 News, Netanyahu was asked whether he could refuse the Trump peace plan. So you could you refuse the Trump peace plan, Mr. Prime Minister? Is this an option for you, for Israel, if you are re-elected? Of course, I look at the... the uh... First of all, I hope not. I don't know what it is. I'll give it a, a, a serious consideration because I, I believe that we've never had a friend, never, greater than President Trump. He, you know, he recognized Jerusalem as our capital. He moved the embassy here. He uh, withdrew 
from the dangerous Iran deal that Lapid and Gantz supported. I went against the whole world to challenge this. And now he's recognized the Golan. Of course, I'll give it its due hearing and consideration because I know it comes from a friend. But I also stated my principles. I will not uh, tear out. I will not remove a single settlement, a single Israeli. And I will not relinquish our actual control of the territory west of the Jordan because we're not going to replicate another Hamastan in Judea, Samaria, which is 20 times the size of Gaza and touches uh, Tel Aviv and Jerusalem and Haifa and Beersheba, and we'll keep Jerusalem united. These three principles, I said to them very, very clearly. They heard it. He was also asked about his policy of annexing the Jewish areas of the West Bank. To it, you have made some blockbuster comments recently. You said that if you were to be re-elected, you would move to annex the West Bank. And you said that you told President Trump that Israel would not remove a single person from the West Bank. How did President Trump react when you told him that? First of all, I didn't say that I would uh, annex the West Bank. I said I would apply Israeli law, or annex, if you will, the, Israeli, the Jewish communities, the Israeli communities uh, in Judea, Samaria. That's different. Uh, and I want to do it as far as I can with uh, American support. Uh, it took me two years to get this document. See it here? I talked to President Trump and I said, recognize the Golan. Please recognize the Golan. It's his choice, of course. Uh, two years later, he recognized our Golan, the Golan, Israeli sovereignty over this vital piece of territory. I'd rather do it this way as well. And that's what I intend to do. How did they react? I explained to... Uh, uh, to uh, uh, President Obama, to Vice President uh, uh, Biden, to others, that uh, this is my policy. Uh, and I've said time and time again that I would not remove a single Israeli settlement, settlement or a single Israeli forcibly. I, I'm against this whole notion of ethnic cleansing. So, I just don't believe in it. Prime Minister, uh, did you ask President Trump? to then consider recognizing Israel's sovereignty over the uh, I've West I've discussed Bank, it with his did? people. It's not something that I've said, you know, there are elections now, so I'm saying it. Uh, I had, it's a three-stage process. The first was I had to block for eight years immense pressures, immense pressures. First of all, not to, not one brick, they said. Don't build one brick. Well, it was hard, but we built. The second phase was under President Trump to get uh, a much larger compensation and an increase in the uh, construction that we're doing in Judea Samaria and we did we now have 18,000 building starts unbelievable the third stage is to make sure that these uh, Israeli citizens are not forsaken people say oh we'll recognize the blocks but uh, Lapid and Gantz are saying okay and we'll take out 90,000 the others who are outside the blocks no we're not taking anyone out. We're going to recognize, I'm going to extend Israeli sovereignty there. And yes, I told it to President Trump's people. They heard it. What they'll do with it is something else. But I, I think that they, rec I think people respect, even my opponents, they respect the position of principle and strength. Right. And I'm, you know, and I think that I've been able to achieve, as in the Golan, as in my contacts with the Arab world. You see the map behind me? That map has the entire Arab world. I won't tell you that I've met with all the leaders of the Arab countries, but I've met with quite a few. And they respect the position that I, I put forward. They understand not only our attachments to, to our land, but also our willingness to defend ourselves. And by so doing, we also defend them. They understand we face the same enemies. Iran, Daesh, militant Islam. Believe me, they understand it. So I come from a position of strength. I don't believe... What's the left's idea? What is Lapid and Gantz? You know, I'm, I'm trying to persuade people to vote for me. Well, the French-speaking audience certainly understands that. What has the left been saying all these years? First, we'll make concessions, dangerous concessions to the Palestinians. Then we'll get the Arab world, and then we'll get the rest of the world. I've done exactly the opposite. I built up Israel's economy, a free economy. I built up Israel's security, powerful army, powerful Mossad, powerful Shin Bet, made Israel into a cyber power. And then with the two of these, these two things, got the rest of the world to come to Israel. They're all coming here. And one week I was with Trump, received the Golan. I was with Putin, brought back the remains and the artifacts of Zechariah Baumel, uh, Zechonoli Vracha. And in the middle, Bolsonaro, 
from Brazil was here with a quarter of a billion people and embraced Israel, touched the Kotel. It's a big difference. All the world is coming here. So my position is the opposite. I go to the world from a position of strength. From the world, I go to the Arabs from a position of strength. And if we have peace, it'll be from there to the Palestinians from a position of strength, not weakness. Since we haven't seen Trump's peace plan yet, but if it was the case that Trump is planning to require Israel to give up these areas, you can imagine him looking on in horror as Netanyahu put down these red lines, and you might even expect him to endorse his opponent, who was a lot more, um, a lot less hard line on these issues. But instead, he continued to support Netanyahu. And when he won the election, um, he made this comment. I'd like to congratulate Bibi Netanyahu. It looks like that race has been won by him. It may be a little early, but I'm hearing he's won it and won it in good fashion. So uh, he's been a great ally and he's a friend. I'd like to congratulate him. That was a well thought out race, I can tell you. But it looks like uh, Bibi has won that race. Go ahead, Steve. Say it. So the fact that BB won, I think we'll see some pretty good action in terms of peace. Look, everyone said, and I never made it a promise, but everybody said you can't have peace in the Middle East with Israel and the Palestinians. I think we have a chance, and I think we have now a better chance with BB having won. Yes. So of course we don't know what Trump's peace plan will, will be, or whether it will be any more successful than those of his predecessors. But this week in the news, we have seen Israel harden against giving up these areas, the areas that Bible prophecy require them to hold. If Trump proposes Israel gives up these areas, Netanyahu has already vowed to refuse. But as Trump has said that he sees, Trump, he sees Netanyahu's re-election as forwarding peace, perhaps we will see Trump suggest a peace plan that allows Israel to hold on to the, these settlements. And we may come to a situation where Israel is at peace and also upon the mountains of Israel, which we saw from Ezekiel 38 will be the situation before Armageddon. Join us again next week for another edition of Bible in the News.